are the helpful hints. The first hint is to regularly keep practicing the new and previously taught letter sounds. Here's the, the new ones are here, qu, u, ch, a, and so on. The previously taught letter sounds, as well as blending and segmenting of words that use the new and previously taught letter sounds. Perhaps they might do ostrich, a long one, or six, six. Remember, each time a new letter sound is introduced, then more words become available. For hint two, encourage the children to blend unknown words silently in their heads. You can do this by pointing to letters on the board. Ask the children to work out the word as you point to the letters and then to put up their hands if they know the word. Then ask your child for the answer. So we might do this one. And they have to put their hands up and hopefully you get sheep. Or maybe... and get win. Or... and get fun. This silent blending encourages the children to say the word straight away and develops fluency in the reading. As usual, keep the sessions fast flowing and short. For hint three, encourage the reading and writing of phrases that use the new letter sounds, making sure that they have been taught, and then progress to reading and writing sentences. If this is given for homework, whether it is reading words or writing words from dictation, make sure the homework is only given to the children who have the necessary skills to do it. The aim of the homework is to bring fluency to the skills. For hint four, the children previously learnt that the letter sounds a, e, i, o, a were short vowels. Now they can be taught that the a, e, i, o, U are long vowels and nearly always, as with these long vowels, two letters are needed to make a long vowel sound. This knowledge becomes more useful later on. At this stage it is just a question of making the children familiar with the short and long vowels and to encourage them to try both when working out an awkward word, as was demonstrated with the tricky words. For hint five, it is worth starting to teach letter names at this stage. Singing an alphabet song is a helpful start. The children need to know that the names are a grown-up way of talking about letters. Try and go over the letters with the children, saying the names A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on. And try and do it at a time when phonics is not being taught. We don't want to muddle the children up and have them saying the letter names when trying to blend a word. It is important that they understand that only the letter sounds are needed for reading and writing and not the letter names. Hint six is a reminder of the importance of reading books to the children, which develops their language skills, vocabulary and comprehension. It is also valuable to encourage an interest and love of books by providing a variety of books for the children to enjoy looking at. Many of the children will start finding words that they can now read on their own, using their newly acquired decoding skills, which is great and very satisfying for the teacher and children. However, that is very different to being given a book and expected to read it to a parent or guardian. When this kind of reading is needed and expected by teachers and parents, then it is important to use decodable readers. This provides the children with the important blending practice and prevents reading problems developing. Hint seven is a question that is often asked. What happens if a child naturally picks up reading at home or has been taught how to read at home before starting school? It can happen, particularly in some areas. It rarely happened in the school where I was teaching, and when it did happen, I welcomed it and would ask the child to read a book I had chosen that was suitable for his or her age. 
if he or she could do this easily with a reasonable amount of fluency, then I would give the child a reading test and find out the child's reading age. Then that child would be given books that were appropriate for his or her reading age to take home and read to the parents or guardians. I would still want that child to be taught synthetic phonics, along with the other children, mostly because it is needed for spelling and reading longer and more complex words, but also because the child would want to join in with the other children. Then, if follow-up follow activities were too easy for a child who could already read, then reading and comprehension activities would be provided instead. So, in conclusion, the aim is for every child in Step 3 to learn the 12 new letter sounds, these ones, as well as revise the others, to blend words that use the 12 new and previously learnt letter sounds, so perhaps go ch, eek, cheek. Write letter sounds and words from dictation. So the teacher might say, I want you to write a sh. And so the child has to think how to write that. And practice several of the other letter sounds. And if it's a word, perhaps the child might need to write sheep. It's got to think sh, eep, and then put it down. A very powerful way of learning to write. In step three, we also need to learn 20 tricky words for reading and spelling them, how to read and write phrases and sentences, and to start with decodable reading books, these type of reading books. And lastly, to be given support if there are problems with these skills. Guidance can be found in the section help with reading and writing problems on the home page. And that concludes the teaching in step three. Thank you.